This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Hello, everybody. It is the Awesome Cast episode 315 on special recording night. So we could talk about what got announced this week, and there's a whole bunch happening. Uh, warning, spoiler alert, as you can see if you're on the vigils, we're probably almost exclusively going to talk about Apple this <laughs> on this episode. Sorry, everybody else, but that's kind of the big news. I mean, there was also a Sony announcement. Maybe we'll, we'll get into that a little bit. Uh, if no, 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 we're just, just shakes. Dell, of, Dell made an announcement. Shakes of the head, shakes of the head. <laughs> um, Dell, wait, really? Dell did one too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, it's they, more they, business they related, right. but yeah. All right, let's keep going and do introductions. Let's go. Okay, introductions like, first like of all. As you've seen, it's coming from Studio C. It is John Chichilla. Hey, how's it going? It's odd, it's odd being on here on a Thursday night. I know, I know. What day is it? The farmer's market? I thought you were coming by. I'm like, stop by the farmer's market. Say hi to Missy. Bite me at the farmer's market. Uh, bite me, PGH. Um, and also with us, hey, that's an old familiar voice I haven't heard on here for a while. Mm. He's hi, everybody. I almost I, have, uh, I almost gave I you your Wrestling Mayhem Show Patreon intro, by the way. Uh-uh. <laughs> nope, Which, nope, 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 yeah, nope, no, 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 no. Yeah, no, we're good. We're nope, good. Nope. Hi, everybody. I still, You know it. You, you know I'm still doing that. You know I'm still I know you are. Hey, listen! Every as a Patreon, as a Patreon subscriber, I've I've uh, helped fund fund quality podcasts since 2014. That's right. So, uh, hi, I'm hi. back, everybody. Uh, this is what they do. Sork says, "Hey, there's a big Apple announcement," and he goes, "Hey, AJ, what's going on?" And then ta da! <laughs> and then I know, and then I know, I can pretty much uh, sit back and relax for the next hour. And here we go. Uh, <laughs> You'll let me talk. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like, no, he just got this. He's got, he's got ideas. Yeah. He's got thoughts. I'll try him in eventually. Uh, but anyways, yes, this is the Awesome Cast. You can check us out at awesomecast.net. You subscribe to this show and the Awesome Chat. We actually recorded some new Awesome Chats just this morning with uh, uh, some friends over at Work Hard Pittsburgh. I'm very excited to to, talk, to show you guys in the next uh, couple of weeks. Also, uh, but you can subscribe to all those shows on Stitcher, Spreaker, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Google Play Podcasts. And, of course, the video versions are up on the Facebook page for Awesome Cast, as well as the YouTube page for Awesome Cast. It's an Awesome Cast if you're looking for the username over there. Uh, you can also join us here, uh, typically, live.awesomecast.net. I'm sorry, no, that's not a thing anymore. Live.sorgatronmedia.com. AJ's here, and I'm getting the old rundown that used to work. Um, live.sorgatronmedia.com, 7 p.m. Eastern Times, where we have the chat room. Uh, Shout-outs to the new chat room. Uh, uh, technology wise we figured out how to embed youtube chat onto our page so that's how we're doing it now because a plugin decided to uh, kill off our chat room when i update wordpress uh so there's that also you can support the show at patreon.com slash uh awesome cast our good friends this will see business development as well as um uh the mike fedora show at mike, mike fedora show on twitter uh, at this will see on Twitter for the other guys as well. Thank you so much. You're at the five dollar executive producer level, uh, funding the show, making it happen, making us uh, having us uh, you know a little, little chance to uh, move forward with the show and do some cool things. Thank you so much for uh, um, believing in this. And you can uh, uh, you can also contribute over there, Patreon.com/slash AwesomeCast. But you don't have to. Please just share the show, rate it, tell a friend. Hey, there's this podcast where they talk about things you might like. This week, I hope it's Apple. All right, let's get into our awesome, uh, the Apple things of the week. Let's just go that way. Uh, I, where do we start? Do we start with the iPhone? Do we do we start with the iPhone or we hold off? Because let's be honest, we've heard everything about the headphone jack. Let's, let's start um, where they started with uh, with iWork. I, oh, okay, <laughs> hold okay. on. Time out, time out. Can I, can I, can I let, me, let me just, for everybody who is watching this show because you're friends of Sorg and mine and Chilla's, we live in the city of Pittsburgh. Don't you ever disrespect iWork. That's providing jobs to people in this city. Oh, that's right. They're here. I keep that, forgetting. They're here. That. Yeah. Because they're here. iWork. So they, they just got the, the new office over in the over in the Strip District. Nice. Or I don't know if they're into it yet, but yeah, they're here. So that's providing jobs in the city of Pittsburgh. Don't you ever disrespect Pages. Nope. How nope. dare you? Pages for um, life. Yeah. They, they, they were editing slides live on stage. Mm-hmm. Riveting mm-hmm. television. It was sexy. Really. It was sexy. 
Um, I use well, pages they, every they put time. Graphics together. I use pages every time I need to open a Word document. That's because it. Office is, is <laughs> silly and expensive. You're right, right. Well, <laughs> everything else is Google Docs, so you know, yes, like yes. if I want to do real work, I'm doing Google Docs. Um, but I will support and use sometimes your free app. Thank you. Yes. For so uh, yeah, they started with Pages. They're gonna have live real time collaboration. <laughs> That's coming someday. Uh, they 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 made a big deal about it, and everybody was like, "Come on, guys! Google Docs has been doing this forever." And I thought about it for a second. And I went, "Yeah, you can edit." You can edit cells in a slot in a sheets document. You can live edit text together too. But they were doing it with presentations and graphics, which was kind of cool. And everybody was kind of putting their animations together at the same time, which I guess is kind of cool. But uh, that, I mean, they got like a three minute demo and bless them for that because nor old Apple keynotes would have given them an hour and it would have been real painful. So everybody, thank the new Apple. Um, so uh, Chilla. I have a feeling I know what your awesome thing of the week is. And what would that be? Uh, a wonderful new person is joining the App Store. So that's actually not mine. I think that I thought that was going to be Sorg. No, no, that's that's mine. That's mine over here. Okay, go ahead. I don't Sorg, care. Tell them, <laughs> tell them about who's buying, joining the App Store. I'm not buying anything Apple for about a year that they talked about. So, so I'm excited because I even got Mario's coming. And freaking Miyamoto was there. Yeah. Like that blew my mind. I'm like, wait, we haven't seen a keynote anything from Nintendo for how many years? They don't even go to E3. Nobody shows up on stage anymore. And then we get we get Miyamoto on the Apple stage. Like it's like the perfect synergy combination of two companies that are really serious about proprietary f- platforms. Yeah, they're very good at it. Yeah. Uh, I, I was very uh, I was kind of I was I was also stunned to see Miyamoto come out. I figured they'd they do an Apple thing. Like when they started talking about it, I was like, all right, it's going to be Mario. And then I was not expecting Miyamoto to come out. And he did, which is great. Um, they came out, they debuted uh, Super Mario Run. Surprise, they have a platform runner. And they had Toad Battle as part of that, which I think is a feature of the game that allows you to play against ghost versions of your friends playing the game, which is kind of cool. Um, so I'm. I'm uh, genuinely impressed that they got that, and they got Miyamoto, and Miyamoto ate a fake hamburger. Now, he- <laughs> you can play it one-handed, guys. Okay, so here's here's my general take. First of all, there's a couple of different things that were impressive with this. First of all, this is the first time that I've seen. You can tell how big of a deal this was because you go to the App Store, and already at the App Store, I just happened to be going there to do some updates, and it's plastered all over is Super Mario Run. I'm like, wait, it's not out yet. Like, are they really like pre-advertising this? You go through, there's an app page, there's a video of gameplay, which really got me excited, and uh, and there's a, a notify button instead of a buy. So you'll get a notification when it pops up. Yeah, they were they were talking about that on the uh, Accidental Tech podcast. And the, the one thing that they mentioned was that iBooks has actually had this for quite some time, that you could pre-order things and you could be notified of books coming. Right. So I think it's... I, I'm. I wouldn't be surprised if it was technology from one side coming over to the other. Um, but yeah, this is the first time that any app has been like announced and there's been like a notify system for it. Um, Sorg, are you excited for Pokemon go on the Apple oh, watch? Oh, I want to go. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I yes, but I also want to go back to another uh, fact about the Mario thing that has me excited. Now I've been enjoying this ecosystem on Apple where um, I've been playing a few games, uh, autos adventure, uh, Pac-Man 256 and um, uh, Cannonball is another one I just picked up that I saw in the, in the new indie game movie. And uh, uh, I love this ecosystem where I can play these games. I've been playing these games and I load up my Apple TV and I'm like, oh joy, it's here too. And I'm completely cloud saved between the two of them, ready to go. And they mostly said iOS, I think, for this. I know they showed off iPhone and everything, but I'm, I'm going to keep hope alive on this, that there may be an Apple TV version of this. Um, which That'd be pretty awesome. That I'm playing <laughs> Nintendo games on my Apple TV on my TV again. Yeah, even if it is just a runner, an endless runner, that's fine. And I was a little like, ah, it's just an endless runner. Then I sh- saw the footage. I'm like, no, but it's Mario being an endless runner, and that's okay. Uh, and it, it's not endless, is it? There's there's levels. Right, you're right, but it's basically a runner, right? I, it's not. Mm-hmm. It's it's a tap and swipe thing. It's not like a full on game by any means. It's it's aspects of a game, 
Um, so they're looking at Mario start wall jumping. Is that something they did in New Super Mario Bros. 2 or something? Uh, or, or maybe it's just for this game. But uh, either way, plenty excited. And then you show me Pokemon Go on the watch and make me upset that I just got, I, I have a Pebble 2 on, on order uh, later this month. Jeez. Come on, guys. Oh, oh, maybe with the new watches, we can work out some kind of trade. <laughs> <laughs> I I'll have three pebbles by then. How many of them get me an Apple Watch? <laughs> what, what's <laughs> three what's, baubles for one watch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I will say this, uh, and because I I ended up getting the watch, I wasn't planning on it, and then uh, a real life bank error in my favor happened, which is great. Um, and so when I got it, I, I got the aluminum watch because. I didn't get that great of a bank error. And uh, the only thing I really wanted was a leather band. And I actually found an aluminum leather band. Nice. At at Target.com of all places. Not in the store, just on their website. And it was the only place on the internet that I could find it. So it was, uh, was kind of nice. So I actually have a professional looking Apple Watch now. Um, I guess that's a, that's a segue uh, into uh, the Apple Watch itself. Sorg, unless you want to talk more about Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go. Oh my God, Pokemon Go! Uh, so, do you, do, you, do you think that's going to drive people though to the watch, or is that just to reaffirm people that have the watch, or to get people that have the watch and put it in a drawer to get them to pull it back out? Listen, it's not—it's not a reason. It's not a reason like next to uh, next to the uh, 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 Pokemon Go band that's going to be coming out like like very soon. They finally announced a, a new release date for it, but uh, it's it's like. Uh, Check another box that makes me want to have one on my wrist, right? And I do wonder because they did say about Mario being exclusive for iPhone, and it's not nothing, at the beginning. They did, yeah. At the yeah, beginning. it'll be ex- it'll be a beginning exclusive, and then a, a lot like other games, it'll it'll come over to other platforms. Okay, uh, that's acceptable. And, and, and there was no mention that whether this Apple Watch uh, Pokemon thing, because I, I I can't think that Niantic, uh, being a Google originated company, will. Uh, ignore the app of the android wear i think they just kind of got first dibs of showing off hey look what you can do and i think my friends with their uh their samsung gears and their their uh, moto 360s and stuff are going to have it too uh so so i i'm like i'm happy with it but it's like still like and really really there's not much reason why they couldn't also have a pebble uh, app out there too to be honest really <laughs> Because I mean, if you look at it, there's there's this thing called development time. What? There, there's this thing called development time. Well, yeah, but so. I think I think as far as reaching out to actually, I think if you put it on the Pebble Watch, you're kind of cutting into the uh, Pokemon wearable uh, pricing range a little bit there. I know it's like only thirty five bucks, but still. Like well, they you, had a thing. There's there was another thing they actually showed, and it looks like a tiny little Pokeball thing. It, it's a wearable too, and the guy he had it in his pocket. Yeah, that's and the, he said this is coming soon, and I guess it's going to do the same, generally the same thing as the Apple Watch. Right, right, exactly. It, it, it buzzes, and I think you can tap it to uh, try to cap, like do poker stops and stuff as you're walking by, and and it tracks you for like the egg, the egg walking, and everything like that. So, uh, so there are plenty of you can Pokemon a lot of different ways, but the but but again, that, that has me excited for it. But then you're looking at it it's like this is fancy, but they're not really doing a lot with this, right? You're not, you're not catching pokemons on this thing you still have to pull out your phone for that but still that's not what it's meant for but um but apple watch uh, moving into more apple watch i was actually really impressed by the improvements they are making to the official series 2 uh version of the watch uh uh, i was and for the cheapskates out there that are just trying to get an edge into this world um i like that they do have the old one because they kind of like figured that with how their their iphones are going but it's the old technology, except they upgraded the chip to the same as the new one. Yeah, so it's getting the same. What is it? The dual core chip, and that, but it lacks the GPS and yeah. and the water, the water, the waterproof. Yeah, the waterproof. Yeah, yeah. So my my awesome thing of the week is actually not the phone; it is the speaker in the Apple Watch Series Two. Um, so when they were going through a bunch of the various specifications of the watch and they started talking about the fact that it's going to be waterproof to 50 meters, they started talking about the fact that there's still a speaker and they mentioned it in terms of 
this is an entry point for water. And the original speaker looks like this. And they showed what would happen if water got in there and it like kind of filled up. And they were like, well, we had to figure out a way to get the water out because water plus electronics is bad. So they redesigned the, the speaker so that it doesn't allow water to come in. It actually just kind of holds it back like this. It's actually like a, a almost looks like a like an angled ceiling. And the water comes in, and then when it detects that there's water in there, it vibrates the speaker to push it back out. Which I was like, that's the wait. What? And then I had to like think about it a little bit more and I was like, oh, so if you go swimming, you're gonna get out of the pool and it's gonna sound like a like a EDM song is happening on your wrist <laughs> just to get the, all the water out. Uh, I thought that was a, an incredibly clever idea to maintain having a speaker, but also allow it to be waterproof at the same time. Is this like kind of a, a, a new feature manipulation of like the, the mechanics in there that, uh, you know, do the haptic engine, the, 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 the taps and everything that you feel on this? No, it's actually the speaker itself. So it still plays audio, still does all the things that the speaker currently does, except when it detects water, it actually vibrates and plays bass sounds to push the water out. It plays bass. It, it, the interesting thing would be is how are other people doing this? Because they're not the only company that's that's waterproofing their devices. So how is Samsung doing this? How how is this done in other places? Are they just up playing the technology that, or did they actually do something that's a, that's a little different than everyone else? I mean, it's entirely possible that some, but that a company like Samsung with their gear line, uh, having waterproof versions would allow, um, or would have some sort of membrane over the speaker grill that doesn't allow the water to actually get in, but still allows sound to play. Um, I don't know. Uh, I'm sure that somebody is going to go, well, Samsung's been doing this for years. They just never talked about it. And this is the difference between Apple and Samsung. I get excited about a speaker pushing water out of a tiny little speaker grill on a watch. And uh, the other companies are like, look at ours. It's cheaper. Those are the differences. Like it, Apple makes me want to go buy the thing because of the things that it actually does. And they don't worry about the price until the very, very, very end. Right. Versus Samsung who says, hey, here's all of our stuff. And look, we're cheaper than Apple. And that's that's fine. I mean, that's a perfectly legitimate way to go about business. But it's one of those things where this is why Apple has the super hardcore people that love Apple. And Microsoft has the same thing with the band. They show off what it does and clever things that it does that – Maybe people are doing, maybe people aren't. And, um, it, it, you know, it's just one of those things that they they can tout over other things that, that you then get other people trying to say that they do it already and they, they look like followers. It's mm -hmm. all PR and marketing kids. It's all PR and marketing. I, I, I feel like it would have been funny too if, you know, Samsung obviously took a slam at Apple when they said they could create their device, make it waterproof and, and still leave the headphone jack Apple didn't say, oh, and by the way, ours doesn't burn your house down when you try to charge it. Apple <laughs> will never clap back. They will never <laughs> fire back. Um, it's the, one of the things. So what's, what's really interesting, and this is something I was thinking about that morning, uh, which was yesterday morning, was all right, I guess we'll just jump into the iPhone now. The, the thing that I, I, I thought really kind of hard about is the fact that we as, as nerds, Let's call it what it is. Nerd. Are we read a lot of tech news? We're reading rumor sites. We're reading all of these things, and we've known about the headphone jack going away for quite some time. It's been rumored. It's been pushed. It's been a thing that we need to worry about and talk about and discuss and all these other things. So when they were like, "Hey, and there's no headphone jack," I was like, "All right, cool, fine, whatever. You did it." Everybody else on the internet was still mad. And I'd like to point out, now, I'm going to make another uh, local reference here to uh, Pittsburgh radio station, uh, the oldie station here, 3WS, or it's either Bob or 3WS, I don't know, I was listening to it in the car, we were driving the Erie on Saturday, and I hear the lady on the weekend show jump in, like, after a song, she's like, all right, guys. Hey, Apple has an event coming up on Wednesday. It looks like they're going to announce new iPhones and a new Apple Watch. What are they going to do about this headphone jack missing? And I'm like, why am I getting Mac rumors on an oldie station on a Saturday at 2 in the afternoon? What is happening here? <laughs> um, I, I have actually tried to avoid rumors now. Oh, yeah, me too. I'm, 
I'm mm-hmm. actively avoiding spoilers because I, I'm getting. To, I was starting to get to the point with the, a lot of these announcements where it was like, okay, cool, they did that. All right, cool, they did that, and it wasn't. It wasn't exciting anymore. So, like, I knew the sorts of things they were doing because every website is effectively an Apple rumor website now because that generates content. And that's one reason but, why we try not to dive into rumors and everything on here because I know I'm sick of the shows, like two or three shows a week that talk about the headphone jack for the last like two three months pretty much yeah and i mean it's, been it, bad. It's, it's just it's it's rough and and there's always that one thing um into every phone where there's that line and everybody's spouting that line and everybody's in that machine respouting that line and regurgitating that line and we we all hear and sometimes we do the same thing on the show on some certain news items right but right. uh but man it, it, yeah it's been rough um i i actually this morning was actually watching uh cbs news um have you know their cena cena affiliate on uh, talking about it and everything, and it's like, yeah, there's no headphone jack. It's like, uh, freak out. It's been around for 50 years, you know, uh, kind of thing. And, and and nothing like, hey, here's the reason. Hey, this is actually maybe a good thing. It's like, panic. There's no headphone jack. Your stuff's not going to work anymore. Uh, so but- about that, uh, <laughs> I would like to give a, a wonderful shout out to John P- uh, Pascalski from BuzzFeed, who did a uh, an article, or a feature piece called "Inside iPhone 7: Why Apple Killed the Headphone Jack." And he got access to uh, Greg Joswiak, Phil Schiller, and um, I don't know if he got access to anyone else. I can't remember. But basically, it was, here's why we did it. And it was basically the camera is actually the reason they did it. Um, There was a, uh, it's called the driver ledge. So at the top of both devices is something called the driver ledge, a small printed circuit board that drives the display and the backlight. Historically, in every iPhone, it's placed there to accommodate improvements in battery capacity where it's out of the way. But because it interfered with the new iPhone 7's camera systems, Apple moved it lower in the device. But then it pushed everything down. And so in particular, the audio jack. And then they took out the audio jack. And then they realized that it was easier to install the Taptic engine, which drives the new pressure-sensitive home button. And it also allowed the battery to get a little bit bigger, which allows 14% more battery, or it got a 14% bigger battery, which allowed them to get two more hours of battery life out of the phone. And it just turned into one of these things where it was like, okay, oh, and also because there's no headphone jack, there's no giant opening in the bottom of the phone for water to get in, which allowed them to do the water test at IP67, which is... um, the six stands for dust protection, which means it's uh, totally protected against dust. And seven is or seven is the second highest. It allows it to go into water between six inches and uh, three feet of water for up to 30 minutes. Um, they've been trying to get that for years and have never been able to do it because of the headphone jack. Now, Samsung friends, I know that you're going to say that they can do it with the jack that they have. And that's great. Apple decided to get rid of it because they felt like it wasn't something that was necessary anymore. It also allows them to sell the new AirPods, which, uh, opinion time, hot take here. I think they look dumb. Um, <laughs> they hang out of your ear. It, it's, they, it's, it's, they don't fit my ear. They don't fit my ear now with a wire. Yeah. So let's add no wires and just let them fall but, out of my but head. But hey, hey, but happy, happy coincidence if there are, and I know both of you guys, and, and, and they will lead in this discussion, uh, uh, have been in the world of Bluetooth audio for a while, you know, uh, uh, you're, you're, you, you don't have to wait for this. You don't have to go with the Apple thing. It's not coming in the box. You probably already have a solution for this. Yeah, I've, I've been on the Bluetooth wave for a while. Right. And um, in fact, I believe I talked about them when I first got them on this very show. I remember you testing uh, them and we said, yeah. don't use that for a podcast, but still. <laughs> yeah, it was it was real bad. I tried using it for a podcast, and the blue the the delay from the video on my laptop to my headphones was real bad. It was rough. It was um, rough. It was, but, it was it was pretty rough on this end too. <laughs> but to be fair, uh, when you're just listening to a podcast on your phone or you're listening to music on your phone, the delay is actually not that bad uh, because you can't see it. it. There's nothing to see. There's nothing that your eyes and your ears are trying to match up together like a video. Um, but one of the things I think that they they did, and they specifically said uh, in this article, they are putting an adapter in every box. So the Lightning 2 headphone adapter will be in every box. And he's, it, this is the quote, the direct quote from Greg Joswiak. This time, 
we're putting an adapter in every box. This time. More or less this time where he said, basically it's a tip of the hat to when they switched to lightning and they did mm-hmm. not put a, a, an adapter in every box and the internet and the world got real, real, real mad. So, um, you can buy it if you need another one. It's $9. Um, the one thing that everybody kept talking about as part of the headphone jack is that you can't charge and listen to music at the same time. If you have regular headphones, um, my, my hope with this now I have Bluetooth audio, or I have Bluetooth headphones. I'm not mad about this in the slightest. I'm not, I have zero heartburn about this. It's been a hole in my phone for at least the last two years. Um, the interesting part to me is that there's a, does this cause the industry to actually get better at Bluetooth headphones? And I think that's, I think that's the push from, from the AirPods. I think, I think that's their goal. I don't, that's actually my awesome thing of the week is the AirPod. Well, and the AirPods fit my ear just fine. Um, you lucky I have, human. <laughs> I have, and, and looking around my desk, okay, so I have this Bluetooth headset and I have this Bluetooth headset and the Bluetooth headset I'm talking on right now. Um, and it, it syncs just fine. The, the, the two things that I'm looking for out of, out of the, the AirPods are the beamform mic which definitely is of interest to me. I walk down the street. I'm on the phone a lot. Um, I'm going between buildings, so I have to continue a meeting while I'm going in person to my next meeting. Um, There's one set or there's one um, earpiece that I use for that, and it does a pretty good job of doing background noise cancellation, um, mainly due to the mic that's on it. I'm looking. Uh, I'm looking at it for, for from that aspect, as well as we're actually doing a big switch over to to soft phone and and software based phone technology. And obviously, everyone then needs a headset that plugs into their computer. I'm amazed at the amount of people that can't plug in a USB headset and figure out how to get that working. Um, let alone trying to pair a Bluetooth wireless headset, because a lot of people do want that Bluetooth wireless headset. The ease of use, and I think Carla Warren on Gizmodo talked about it. She was she was rather impressed with the ease of the sync process, and that's where I think they're going to really push the agenda across the Bluetooth world is with the the sync process and hopefully pushing forward a lot of better microphone type devices. I do have a, car- a pair of Bose wired earphones that I use. Um, they're in ear. They're they're nicely molded. Um, I'll definitely still carry carry those for when I want to get into heavy audio. But for those, I can't carry on a phone conversation because the mic is a piece of junk. Um, so that being said, that that's where I really hope they're they're pushing these devices. I, I think it's cool what they're doing. Where you know you pull one out, it'll pause your music. If you start music with one in. Um, It'll keep it. It'll play just in that one, um, and then obviously some of the haptic or the touch feedback where you can kind of talk to Siri. I think they should do something where you can, if you have both in, you can double tap on this side for Siri and and do some different taps on this side to to forward and advance. I don't want to have to talk to Siri every time I want to go to the next track, but I, I think that's a work in progress. And if they get to the point where they make where this drives the industry to make better Bluetooth headphones, to make better wireless headphones, I'm all for that. Now, the problem is, is that all of the ones that I like, I like full in-ear earbuds. Um, I'm going to talk a lot about ears tonight. And the, <laughs> the, the funny part is that that neckband thing that I have provides really, really, really great battery life. But like, John, like your Bose ones, the microphone on it is real bad. It picks up. Um, so I had, I had a pair of those LG tones. That's the one you're talking about? Yeah. So, so I have a pair everything. of those. It picks, you walk down the street, and it's like I just threw my headset into the middle of traffic. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's re- it's, it does not do a very good job of noise cancellation. Um, I have uh, former coworkers who are very, very into their Bluetooth headsets because they do a lot of talking on the phone while driving. And so they've all tried all of the various kinds. And while the LG ones are nice for having Bluetooth headphones, they're not very great for um, phone calls. So, yeah, I, I still see that's why, the, that's why the Bluetooth headset, the actual like microphone single ear piece is still 
recognize as the best one. Um, but I'm hopeful that this sort of thing where if you have a, um, if you have a, an iPhone seven, you can still use the, the, the included earbuds. Well, the wired ones are lightning based, but I'm hopeful that that sort of becomes less and less needed. I'm sure those are still going to be used by everybody. Look around when you're on the next time you're in, in a, a heavily populated area, look around how many people are using those white earbuds. There's a lot. Um, but I think Apple buying beats helps them because they can sell beats headphones. Um, I think Bose will likely come out with some better Bluetooth, uh, options. I, I, I would not be surprised if in the next six months, 12 months, you're going to see a lot of Bluetooth headsets hit the market, a lot of Bluetooth headphones hit the market that will be better than what's currently available. I, I was surprised too, to see that. Apple, I, I saw a couple couple places today where, where people were covering the Apple Docks. So the, the dock has the lightning pass-through for charging, um, and then it has the regular headphone jack in the back. Yes. So you can – and I use a dock at work because I actually have to look at my phone quite often. So my dock – or my phone sits up. Um, so doing that pass-through is no big deal for me. I also saw – and I think it was Belkin today, and it is the most god-awfully adapter – ugly adapter but it's a it has the lightning light, the dual lightning adapter, the dual lightning adapter. <laughs> oh, God, it's so bad so belkin uh came out with an adapter where it's a single lightning port in and it comes out and it has two lightning ports one for your headphones and one for your charger cable and it also so basically you would have the from your headphones you would have headphones into the lightning adapter which then goes into the double lightning adapter which then goes into your phone just buy a pair of Bluetooth headphones, people. Just, just go do it. It's fine. Especially for the $40 they're charging for the adapter. Well, okay. So so here's the other thing is, one, I lose stuff. So so paying Bluetooth headphones, I, I'm, I'm okay getting, you know, the cheap skull candies or, or something for replacements and everything, right? Um, so that's kind of my first problem with that. And and then, then how expensive are, are these headphones going to be? Thankfully, there's adapters. But then again, the adapter for my LifeProof case that I bought in April, maybe? Um, already is going on me. I don't know. You got a good six months out of it, right? Um, four, five months out of it, six months out of it. So then they're like super cheap. But that gives me an idea of what how that adapter is going to last, uh, at least in my my day to day use. I think I think this is just another thing. Yeah, it's another thing I'm going to be uh, bulk buying on Amazon because I keep losing them or damaging them, um, much like I do lightning cords right now, right? Um, or headphones, or something, you know, you know, or you know, anything else like that. Um, I was telling you, uh, let's talk chill a little bit before the show. My take it is on this. Um, I'm really glad I'm on the S series of phone. So much like when the lightning, uh, the switch to the lightning uh, 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 port from the 30 pin uh, adapter, like I felt like most things were kind of worked out by then. Much like I'm kind of happy because there's so many cases on the market by then, right? So you don't have to go with like what's just what's new and whatever you can get your hands on. You actually have a little bit of selection. Um, I, I think this is one of those things where there will be solutions. Belkin will have a less ugly adapter, hopefully. Um, and, and everybody else will have uh, better solutions and better practices. Although I am concerned because this feels like the same problem that we have with the, uh, the, the, the USB-C MacBook. Is, well, yeah, okay, well, you want to do... For some basic like like plug in to power and do anything else functional with this, you're gonna have to start doing this this adapter dance, right? Um, and, and that does concern me. That, that that does concern me that that we're gonna we're gonna have that a good bit. So, so I, I'm I'm gonna ask the question: How often do you really have to charge your phone at the same time you want to listen to something? So that to me, that's a, that's a not very frequent occurrence for me. Um, and where I think Apple is going to go with this is we're going to see wireless charging in the future or mm -hmm. some kind of alternative charging method like the Pogo or the what are they the 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 three um, connectors that are on the side of the the newer iPads. Um, I think you're going to see that and wire and or wireless charging in the next release, which will kind of alleviate this. But I go back to it's it's not that often that I want to charge and listen to something simultaneously. 
that I'm not already charging and using Bluetooth. Um, if I, I use that wired headset more when I'm on the train or in very or at the gym, which typically I don't I don't plug that device in simultaneously. Okay, I do have a use case for you. Um, walking around, I'll go down and I'm playing Pokemon Go and, and having some meetings downtown and have lunch with with uh, one of you guys downtown or something, and 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 that drains on my battery. And then it gets to a certain point, and you get to a certain point where, well, I need to plug into my you know battery pack that's with me, or uh, and, and Amelia, during this, I just realized there's a solution to this that's probably going to be coming any day now. But anyways, um, so you know, listening on a train because I want to make sure I'm ignoring people on the train. Um, I'm gonna. I also need to keep it alive, right? Because the thing's not going to last a full day downtown, Pokemon going and, and doing everything else. Uh, so that's my use case. Now I realize. I realized in my head I had a vision, and I would almost put money that this is going to be. If it's not like announced in the next week, uh, this is going to happen. Because I thought just that I had a, had had the vision of a Mophie case. And, I, think that was- and I, I was actually going to say the same thing. It's it's not going to it's not it, it's not going to take months for someone to come out with a case with no. an integrated headphone jack. We, we already have docks and adapters. We'll end up with like there was a nice one that nice ish one that looked like it just connected. It actually, I guess it already exists for these that 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 give you a lightning adapter and a headphone jack in it. So all you need to do is is just add a headphone jack to the Mophie. You have that weak point water wise with the Mophie, not with the phone itself. I think that works out really well. Does this mean I'm not getting a life proof for a life proof case for my next uh, iPhone Seven series? They're, they're going to ask a good strong question as to why. Um, yeah, I mean, I th- the, oh, speaking of life proof, um, Apple quietly, very very quietly, um, put out a there's a footnote on the iPhone Seven page. I need to go find it because it's kind of funny so they talk about how the um new phone is is you know more resistant to dust and they have the anodized aluminum and all this other stuff what's funny is is at the very bottom of the page it actually talks about how the iphone 7 in jet black that shiny one that they're putting on all of the um on all of the 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 marketing materials and everything like that it it actually scratches really really easily. Oh no! And yeah, there's a whole like it's a footnote at the very bottom of the page where it talks about like oh hey yeah if you if you do this uh, the the yes the number two if you go to apple.com/slash iphone seven right uh, way down two. way down may I read this since I got it on page for all you guys you to read go, on video you go ahead I have it as well uh, this number two right yeah uh, the mm-hmm. high gloss finish of the jet black iPhone 7 is achieved through a precision nine step anodized and polishing process its surface is equally as hard as any other anodized Apple products however its high shine may show fine micro abrasions with use if you are concerned about this we suggest that you use one of the many cases available what cover up our beautiful thing that we showed you this process that looks like that that just like just looked insane in the video today i was like look at all this stuff to achieve this wonderful new look and everything by the way don't subject it to your day-to-day life keep it under well, glass i mean let's let's talk about this how many people do you know keep the bare iphone yeah it's few because mm-hmm. nobody wants to crack the glass right, right? i i have even my phone, which is no, here in my pocket, I have. This is a six dollar PVC or PLC, PLU, PLU. That's what it is. I forget. For most, that's it's, all you it's need. TPU. It's TPU. That's what it is. So it's a just the little plastic rubbery case, right? Nothing, nothing too crazy or fancy here. Um, and the entire reason I have this is so that um, I take this thing takes the beating. I mean. The back of my phone, in real, I'm going to drop my phone and it's going to be hilarious and we're all going to have a good laugh. But the back of my phone itself is actually pretty, pretty clean, pretty, pretty scuff free and everything like that because this thing is taking the beating. Um, I'm glad I actually need to look and do the comparison. So this is a case that I originally got for my six and I still have it and I, I'm fine with it. I'm going to get a new one with the seven because I'm an adult. But it, it's uh, it's one of those things where I think a lot of people already have cases on their phones. 
not for I don't want to scratch the back, but because they want to make sure that when they drop it, you don't shatter the glass. I dropped uh, this. I dropped this the other day, and like so much that it, it was blowing something in the back of the car. It dropped and bounced so hard that it landed like in the middle of the car. Right? It was an arm's length under the car. I had to get on the ground to get it. But realizing if I didn't have a case, or even I, me, probably if I even have had what you have, there was going to be some significant damage done. It was going to look as bad as that oh, yeah. that, that MacBook that that uh, that 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 uh, uh, Chilla has a case on his, the rugged case that he had had a deal, had an ordeal with. Um, and then like the ne- like later that day, the next day, I noticed this piece of rubber like came off of it. I'm like, oh, this like piece of rubber came off. I guess I got, I got a new case. And she's like, yeah, you dropped it. Remember, like severely. I'm like, there you go. I'm looking forward to when I do get the new case, which is, by the way, half the price of what I paid for this if I get the exact same one. Um, I, 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 It's like a visitation to what this phone looks like under this that I don't remember anymore. You know? So. Yeah. And I, I, I think there's a lot of people who, um, they're the purists who want to make sure that people see the design of the phone, all of the curvature of the glass, but I think a lot of people in real life just put cases on their phones because they want to protect the investment that they've made. Yeah, it looks um, nice, but I, 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 I'm trying to kind of come to the realization of, holy crap, this is a, there was a, a issue today where I couldn't get a second camera for a shoot. And I'm like, wait a minute. I have this. And yeah. it actually has space and on it. it. And I completely, uh, the awesome chats coming out in the next couple of weeks, take a look at those. Let me know what you think of them in general. Please listen to them anyways. But look at the video. Can you tell that one of them is an iPhone and the other is a Canon Vixia? I mean, the probably color and everything's going to be a little bit different, but but generally quality wise, are you really going to notice? I didn't notice when I looked at them real quick today in preview, and uh, and 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 I'll be editing that here in the next week and and really seeing. But I was like, this is this is a 4K thing. I, although it wasn't recording in 4K, and I don't know how to activate that. But still, like, it's you know, in a lot of cases, this this could be enough for what you're doing. So. I say that, and I walk around with three thousand dollars cameras usually. So, so I'll uh, I'll put this out there, guys. iOS ten. If you're on the dev or the public beta, public beta got it today. Uh, you can get the the final version right now. What? Um, yeah. So if you're on the public beta, you can go get the final version of iOS ten. Um, I've been on it since Dev Beta One because I'm a crazy person. Uh, I actually joined the Dev Beta One the day before the public beta happened. So I didn't feel so bad. Um, and through the kindness of other hearts, um, I have watch OS three as well because I'm impatient and, um, watch OS three is the truth on an, on a, I have the, the original watch and it, it screams now. Uh, I'm interested to see how many app developers take advantage of that. Um, the dock thing alone is worth it for things like transit. So if you ride the bus, uh, you can see your bus, up your upcoming bus, uh, very very quickly. Um, I'm very very pleased with it. I'm glad. Uh, the problem was the reason why there was no public watch beta is that in order for you to downgrade, if you wanted to, you had to send your watch back to Apple, and so it was one of those like deterrents of people doing dumb things. I don't have that problem, but <laughs> it uh, it's I've been on watch the watch was three the beta for quite a while now. Uh, but it's actually been really, really great. The iOS 10 betas were solid all the way through, both on the iPhone and the iPad. Um, are, go you get iOS the, 10. are you running the Sierra beta? No, I couldn't bring myself to actually install the Sierra beta. I'm never home enough. Or not, I'm not, I don't sit at my desktop at home all the time. Uh, I probably could do it now. At the, that, that final beta just came out today as well. So. Yep. I wanted uh, to see. I, I I wanted to see how the unlock with your watch, how well that worked. Yeah, I, I'm. The problem is, is that <clears throat> what's the word I'm looking for here? I'm not exactly running the type of hardware to <clears throat> allow that to happen. Wink, nudge. <laughs> it's a, it, it, it's not real. It's not a real Mac. It's, it's just a PC running <laughs> OS 10. So I can't. I can't use. I it. forgot that you did that. You're still running on that thing. I have two of them now. Oh man, we need, <laughs> you I know wanna, how awesome you I know wanna, how awesome it is to run it on an Intel NUC. Those tiny little guys. I want to do, do it. I want to discuss. I want to discuss some things with you in the near future. You, then you go ahead. I've got <laughs> I, I've got two of them. I've built two of them. 
I've been building. So just for people who have not been watching the show for basically ever. Oh my God. It's episode 315. I remember. Episode, <laughs> I was on what episode? <laughs> like two. Five. <laughs> I was on episode like five. It was 310. Yeah. Oh, wow. That was a long yeah. time ago. Anyways. Um, <clears throat> the, the, the interesting part of OS 10 is that they've actually gotten easier to install on Hackintoshes as time has gone on. Uh, I haven't looked at Sierra yet, but uh, the actual jump to El Capitan was actually a big deal because they changed the way the bootloader works. But um, yeah, there's certain things you just can't do on a Hackintosh that you can on a regular Mac. Like unlocking your phone requires the Bluetooth pairing to be the actual Bluetooth hardware in a real life Mac and not a third party add on. So if you're <clears throat> if you're an old like let, let, let's say you have a MacBook and that MacBook's Bluetooth chip died, or you have an old MacBook that doesn't have Bluetooth and you got a little Bluetooth dongle, they're like this big. Um, those sorts of things don't work. So that that kind of stinks. I want to get to some stuff in the chat room, but I want to point out that I just hit the button to download the profile for the beta, public beta system. Uh, shall I? Should I? Am I crazy? Yeah, you might as well do it. I might, you might as well I mean, do it. It's, I mean, it's, the, it's, the, it's the release candidate. You're, it, it's, it, you can get it now or you can get it on Tuesday. Here, The only thing I will say is if you leave that profile on your device, you will get all future betas. So... If you want to leave, if you want to upgrade a release candidate today and then remove the profile, um, then you'll go on to the default upgrade path. If you leave the profile on the device, you will get the updates as part of the beta. Yeah, I remember 10.1, 10.2, whatever. Yeah, I remember 9. I remember I was on 9.0 and I left the beta profile on. And um, it was like a week or two later and it was like, you have a software update. I was like, software update and it's i happening. forgot the beta profile was on there mm-hmm. and it was like you're eligible for the 9.1 beta 9.1 beta 1 and even deleting the profile didn't make the update go away i don't remember what happened to make it go away but it just sat there with that one and it was just it was like uh it was like tim cook was personally needling my ocd <laughs> to like get rid of all notifications uh speaking of which you could do that now you could just tap and hold on a notification hit clear all and all your notifications go away who wants to do this with me right now well, let's see let's all... i've restarted ready? i've restarted and uh i'm going to software update right, here, let's, let's do this like, see, ready everybody you... and then I tap yeah. and hold oh, God. and then it says oh, no, i mean you, you tell me i'm actually going to no, use it's... 3d touch am i actually going to use 3d touch now this is happening yes. this is absolutely yeah, hey, yeah. happening hey look look sorg Ready? Oh, Look, they're all notifications. They're see all it. notifications. It's fuzzy. Oh, now came from the oh, I just agreed. <laughs> I just agreed to the terms. I just agreed. It's, over, it's happening. It's happening. I'm. It's happening. Um. um okay. Yeah. While while it's my too late. Fate, it's too late now. while my fate rests in um Apple's hands here, and I'm about You're to fine. I'm about to download 1.7 uh, gigabytes onto my phone when I'm supposed to leave in about five minutes to go to a meeting. Uh, It'll just no. When, what, no I'll tell you this right now because I've done this upgrade a couple times while on, while on shoddy Wi-Fi. Uh, basically, the download just fails and your phone doesn't update. Okay, fine. that's fine. That's fine. So this might ha- um, so the this other might thing happen is, later tonight. But anyways, anyways, uh, from the so, chat room, uh, uh, Watch OS three for those of you who have the watch and mm-hmm. you're going to upgrade to Watch OS three. You're going to want to set aside some time. You're going to want to set aside some time. I'm not kidding. When I loaded the original, uh, not the original beta, whatever beta I actually joined, I think it was beta three. Uh, it took a solid two and a half hours to three hours for me to upgrade to watch OS three. So um, buckle up, get yourself a beverage, just turn your, you need to put your watch on the charger and then just walk away for a while. In fact, I recommend doing it and then going to bed. And then when you wake up in the morning, you'll have a new OS on your phone. Yay. Or on your watch. Yay. Yeah. As long as it took Kombat, a long time. As long as Mortal Kombat still work, I'll, I'll be happy. Um, but anyways, so, so uh, from the chat, we had some good, points that I, I did want to get to crazy Krauss is in there um and and, and i asked him like what do you think what do you think of the phone and everything he he of course has just um uh, moved to android from windows phone our rip uh in the recent months and we had him on to talk about that in, in uh, uh previous episode uh and he's saying uh you know uh, seems to be you know really nice hardware but again considering that most android devices are hitting the 400 dollar mark um for nice hardware for them uh that is true that is true. There is the Apple tax, but I, but the, I will even I will. Samsung Samsung's hitting that tax. I mean, yeah. you're not getting $400. Thing. 
those those devices are subsidized. If you're paying full price, you're paying a close to close to the same amount. Right. Yeah. Right. And this is this is my thing. So the Samsung Galaxy line is definitely in line pricing wise with Apple. If maybe a little bit less, maybe fifty dollars less, not multiple hundred dollars less. Um, the the line that you hit at the three hundred dollar mark. So the One Plus see the One Plus line. Um, there's a couple other ones. HTC has a couple too. Um, I gotta be really honest. I have yet to see an Android camera I like. And every time I'm like, oh man, I'm going to go buy an Android phone. This is going to be great. I've yet to find an Android camera I like. Mm -hmm. The Mm -hmm. OnePlus 2 had a good camera, but you had to go in and change a bunch of settings to make it look good. It's not as default. it's It's not as point and click like Apple is, and that's what they're specializing in, and they're doing that right. Um, but they're also, we're, we're running into, this seems familiar, doesn't it? Right. It's like, yeah, I can get a cheaper one of these, but is it really like, you know, as good as this? And will I get as much out of this device in, uh, at the 18 month mark as I will this device, right? Um, You you might get a software update on the 18 month mark. You'll get the first software update. If you're lucky, (laughs) if you're lucky, right. Um, versus, you know, same, it's the same feeling I get. When I pick that MacBook Pro versus not a Surface, but like the the eight hundred dollar Dell that would be tricked out, right? It's like, yeah, I know what that extra like five hundred dollars is going towards, right? Because this is still running. I have Apple Care. I have all this stuff going with it, um, and the ecosystem works for me, right? Where you. I, 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 my wife sits on a PC and says, this is doing this. Oh, I'm updating again. Oh, I guess I have to wait. Uh, I'll be in our 10 minutes. You know, all the things I complain about that, and it's like, that's what I'm paying more for. And it's, I mean, that, it's that Apple hardware to software convergence, which I think we're seeing in the camera, right? Because how much of that stuff they talked and they got really detailed was the hardware versus the software. It's both a marriage of both, and that's why it works so well, versus, I, okay, a little bit of this, a little of that, and this guy, and, and you have multiple people work uh, trying to reinvent the same wheel, uh, your Samsung, your Huawei's, and everybody else, right? Uh, and it's not as a concerted of an effort. They're doing great stuff. Don't get me wrong. You're doing amazing stuff. I still fawn over the S7 Edge, um, but uh, but still, I think in the long run, like the, the quality is here. In the long run, that's what I see. That's why I'm, I'm I, I got an Apple on everything. That's my actual daily driver. So yeah, and it's it's one of those things where with the with the camera is the big one for me. Um, I just really don't like the pictures that any of the Android cameras takes. And Phone Arena actually has a really great uh, function where you can compare the picture. They have a single image thing that they take a picture of, and then you can pan around the picture with the with the phone basically there's like a preview of what phone took the picture so there's like the iphone 6s the galaxy s7 the lumia 1020 back when it had the big 41 megapixel guy and you can basically put them all side by side and look at the picture that it took and they all took the exact same picture um which is actually a really really cool uh function that you can take advantage of um i would I would honestly say that I think there's a lot of really good Android phones oh, in yeah. the three to four hundred dollar range, but yeah. that's not what I'm looking for. What I'm actually looking for, it, what I'm looking for, is this because it I have too much invested in this. Uh, I can't leave iMessage. Um, iMessage is just so strong. You're going to Lightroom on um, this thing. People are going to Lightroom raw camera files on this thing. Like we're at yeah. that point. Like I'm sending photos to my phone because I have apps on there that are going to do a better job at visuals than I am sitting down in Photoshop, which I pay for, right? Uh, although it is part of the same ecosystem because it's Adobe products that I'm still using over there. But it's like, I'll oh, just kick over here and I can da 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 and I can send it right out to social media. Like we're at that point. Uh, so, well, guys, we've uh, hit our Apple allowance talk for this week. AJ and AJ Cuptic on the Twitter. That's it. That's the place. That's where I go. I saw your brother this weekend. You did. You did see my brother. <laughs> uh, we got to talk about that for a second after the show. Okay. Over. Okay. We'll talk about that uh, in a very, like, uh, it should be expected if you know the situation, but still, um, not the, the, the framing for this show. Uh, but hey, what's going on? Are you still doing a, a, a 
virtual potholes? I am. I, I've done. I've done things with my blog. I moved it. I think since we've talked, I think I've moved it to. I've, I moved it to Tumblr. Ooh, upgrade. Uh, I the theme. <laughs> I actually set up proper DNS forwarding, so when you actually go there, it keeps the. I, I set up something with Tumblr, so it actually uses the DN, the my actual domain name and not the like virtual potholes oh, wordpress dot com. If you go to that site, you will get a wonderful prompt that asks me for access. I will not grant it. Um. <laughs> all of the pictures there. I need to still do blog move things. The archives don't have any Ooh, pictures. You've won some awards over the years. I have. I have I've been, I've been, I've been, I am an award winning uh, blogger, I guess. Anyways. Uh, yeah. I actually just Cisco, blogged, the, I blogged Cisco yesterday champion. about sequel things. Uh, I had a, D, a WWDC wish list. Um, yeah. I've done some, I've done a little bit of blogger rating. Um, yeah, so I still do it there. And I actually typed an entire blog post on my bus ride home. I started typing the moment I got on the bus and hit post when I got off the bus. And that was the last blog, my last blog post. So, um, shout out to tethering to my phone. The, yeah, that's, that's where I go. So virtualpotholes.com at AJ Koftig on Twitter. Tell me why I'm wrong. Awesome. Well, we need to make sure um, we don't have until the next iPhone announcement before you're on again. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there. Are, I'm sure. I'm sure there are new Macs coming at some point. Sure, here. maybe uh, around September 20th when the Sierra comes out, perhaps. But, no, uh, you think, no. I, I mean, if they're going to do it, they're going to. I don't think they're. The problem is that if Apple drops them quietly, it'll be. I, I don't think they they want to drop the new MacBooks quietly. The new MacBook right. Pros, I don't think they want to do it quietly. No. Um, but I could see them dropping like if they did, if they were going to come out with something new, I could see them dropping a Mac mini quietly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I could see them doing a speed a processor bump on the IMAX quietly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I could see them quietly. doing an air quietly. Oh, the air absolutely quietly. By the way, the air, uh, according to various sources in Apple's retail empire, uh, the air actually outsells the pro. Not surprising. Not surprising. It's, it's accessible. Uh, it doesn't surprise me at all. It's accessible. Okay. Uh, Chilla at Chilla. That's not him. Nobody's there. That's the wrong button. Not Chilla on the Twitter. <laughs> Chilla tech dot net. Are you worried about tech? Yes, yes. Well? Come find me. John Chilla also on the Facebook and Chilla photo on the DeviantArt. As I said, make sure you're all subscribed to the awesome chat. It's on all those same places the awesome cast is as well. Go get the links over at awesomecast.net. Uh, there are some great interviews coming up uh, with, uh, we actually talked with Buzzy and Nick of Black Forge Coffee and Epicast because they're like serial entrepreneurs as far as that stuff goes. So we kind of had a discussion about that. And also we talked with uh, Adam from MetaMesh, PitMesh. Uh, if you're in certain neighborhoods, you know some free Wi-Fi around and what they're doing uh, bringing the community via the internets together uh, across uh, Pittsburgh and, and actually some suburbs maybe as well. Uh, so uh, look out for that the next couple of weeks. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And we have a few things we're trying to line up for that. So we keep that ball rolling. And we're not recording them in the studio. We're 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 on the move. We actually we're recording them on location now. Um, in a few places, we're trying a new technique and everything. And let us know what you think about that as we go. And check out everything, of course, awesomecast.net. Subscribe to the show. Rate the show. Patreon the show. We appreciate all the support you guys have been giving us over the years. And uh, guys like AJ have been around since episode five-ish, you know. <laughs> I've, been, I've been out here on these on these casts. We'll uh, return next week live at SorgatronMedia.com uh, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, thank you. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.